Hello and welcome. Cambridge O level physics paper one multiple choice. The subject code is 5054. This is October November 2021 paper and this is the variant one of this exam. Let's start. First question, which is a vector quantity? A speed, no speed is a scalar quantity. Force, yes, it's a vector quantity. Mass, no, it's a scalar quantity. Distance, no, it is a scalar quantity. Remember, vector quantity has both magnitude and a specified direction. So answer B is the right answer. Next question. Question two, two forces X and Y act upon an object O. The arrow represents the magnitudes and direction of the forces. Which arrow shows the direction of the resultant force? So this is the uh, arrows which are representing the magnitudes and direction of the forces which are acting on two objects. So we use the parallelogram law. So parallelogram law, we just uh, make a x parallel to it and our resultant vector looks something like this. So r vector plus y vector. So which is the vector, which direction arrow, which arrow shows the direction of the resultant force? So this is our resultant force. So the nearest arrow is a. Next question. Two identical objects begin to fall from rest. One object falls from 200 meters above the Earth's surface and the other falls 200 meters above the moon surface. One, one second after they have started to fall, both objects are still accelerating. Remember, there is no atmosphere on the moon and the weight of the object is constant. Which row describes the motion of the objects as the time objects at this time. So acceleration of the object falling above the Earth's surface. So remember the Earth will have some atmosphere. So as the, as the object starts falling, the acceleration starts decreasing till it reaches the terminal velocity. So the acceleration will be decreasing. Similarly, the moon will have no atmosphere. So in the absence of any atmosphere, the acceleration remains constant. So the moon, the acceleration will be constant. So constant and decreasing. First A looks the right answer. Acceleration on the earth is constant, no. Moon constant, yes. So this is not right answer, no. Earth is not increasing, not increasing. So answer A is the right answer for this question. Next question. The diagram shows a car going around as going around a circular track at a constant speed, which arrow shows the direction of the resultant force acting on the car. So the resultant force acting on the car will be the centripetal force towards the center of the track and the uh, best answer is the D answer. Next question. Question number five, an electron has a mass. Where does stationary electron experience a force? So a stationary electron will experience a force because of the gravitational field, yes. Because of the electric field, yes. Because of the magnetic field, no. So the magnetic field will only have an effect on the moving electrons. So answer C is the right answer. Next question. Part. Uh, so, sorry, question number six. A a stone is placed in a measuring cylinder of water as shown. The reading on the cylinder is 75 centimeter cube. Water stone is given. So the volume of water in the cylinder before adding the stone is, so initial volume is or was 15 centimeter cube. And the stone has a mass of, uh, and final volume was 75 centimeter cube. So volume stone is, uh, 60 centimeter cube mass of stone is 90 grams. So the density, density is equal to mass per unit volume, 90 divided by 60 grams per centimeter cube. So this is uh, 90 divided by 60, 1.5 gram per centimeter cube. Answer C is the right answer. Question number seven, the extension of a spring is measured for various load. The limit of proportionality is not reached. Which graph shows extension load graph of a spring? So remember for a spring force is directly proportional to the extension or we can say that F equals to minus K 
k times x. <coughs> uh, so eventually, uh, the overall the force is uh, directly proportional to this. Uh, um, so eventually, the best uh, graph or x is equal to uh, x directly proportional to f. So x is you can call it uh, k times uh, f, um, the, or you can call it as an a times f. So uh, something like this. Uh, it's a straight line graph with a slope. This is uh, the uh, best answer or answer number B is the right choice for this case. Uh, next question, question number eight. An underwater diver moves from an ocean to a fresh water lake. The density of water in the lake is less than, so this is a, a fresh water lake. So this has row two. This is row one, row two is less than row one. Which position does the diver experience the smallest pressure? So pressure over here, uh, B and D are at the same position. So the pressure will be equivalent to row G H. So here we have row one G H and here we have row two G H. So the pressure will be, this D will be uh, less than B. Similarly, at these two points, uh, this will be P2 uh, G H2. So for example, this is H1. So it, over here, A is, or, or you can say that pressure at C is less than A. And eventually we can say that uh, since the density of freshwater lake is less, so this C is the right choice. So the C will have the least pressure amongst all of these four locations. Next question number nine, the air is trapped in a cylinder by a piston. The pressure of, pressure of the air of the air is rho and the length of the air column is 20 centimeter. The piston is moved outwards. The length of the air column increases by 40 centimeter. So uh, let's start again. Question number nine. The air is trapped in a cylinder by a piston. The pressure of the air is rho and the length of the air column is 20 centimeter. The piston is moved outwards. The length of the air column increased by 40 centimeter. The temperature of the air remains constant. What is the new pressure? So remember uh, P1, V1 over T1 equals to P2, V2 over T2. So T1 and T2 are constant. So P1 say is rho. Uh, volume can be direct, is directly proportional to the length. So that is 20 centimeter. P2, we have to find the new pressure. And the next volume is 20 plus 40, 60 centimeter. So P2 is rho 2 by 6 or P2 is 1 by 3 times rho. So P2 is, or the new pressure is B rho by 3. Next question. Question number 10. It says, when the pressure exerted by atmosphere is 0.1 megapascals, the height of the mercury in the barometer is 0.76. What is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere when the height of the mercury in, in, in the simple barometer is 0.57 meters? So height of mercury is 0.65. The pressure here is 0.1 megapascals. So if uh, the height is say one meter, the Pascals will be something like this megapascals. So if the height is 0.57 meters, uh, this will be 0.57. Okay. So the, the nearest answer is 0 0.075 megapascals. 0 0.075 megapascals. So this is the nearest answer. So answer B is the right answer. Ex example, uh, question number 10. 
it says the block diagram the diagram shows a block of mass m pulled in a straight line along a horizontal surface by a force f the block moves a distance d in time t the average speed at which the block moves is v which two quantities must be known to calculate the work done so remember work done is equal to force multiplied by the distance so if this is the force it must is known so add so this distance or the distance moved in the direction of force must be known so two quantities f and d force and d must be known so the moves distance d yes it must be known so part a as part b no no can't find so part a 11 a part is the right answer next question the next question it says the diagram shows an inside of a refrigerator uh, when the refrigerator when the refrigerator is switched on what happens to the air near the cooling unit so the air near the cooling unit is uh, cooled and when the air is cooled what happens to the molecule of air is that that the molecules become close together so when the molecules of the when molecules of the air becomes close together the air becomes uh, or the density of the air becomes more or the air density of the air increases so let's see the molecules of the air becomes close together yes part c and part d are the right answers density of the air increases so increases yes decreases no increases yes so answer d is the right answer next question question 13 less thermal energy it says less thermal energy is needed to raise the temperature of one kg of copper by one degree centigrade, then it is needed to raise the temperature of one kg of water by one degree centigrade. So basically, we are comparing uh, copper and water, and we are comparing the uh, specific heat capacity of uh, both of these materials. So here we can say that since uh, copper requires less temperature, so it, it, we can say that it, it, it is, uh, it requires less heat. Uh, so overall, the copper will have a lower specific heat capacity. So answer B will be the right choice or the right answer. Question number 14. Question number 14 says that the graph is a uh, graph is a temperature time graph for a sample of wax that is heated that is heated so that it melts so the temperature is given it is given. the mass of wax is 200 grams thermal energy that is supplied to wax at a constant rate of uh, 12 kilojoules per minute what is the specific latent heat of fusion of the wax so remember the latent heat of fusion is uh, is the temperature uh, or is the time when the state of the wax changes and during the state change the temperature doesn't changes so in this uh, graph we can see that that during this time the temperature doesn't changes so this is our latent heat region heat region so here we have it is from three to seven minutes. So two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So total of four minutes. So minutes four. So we have four minutes or eventually Q equals to M times latent heat. Uh, that, that's the formula. The mass is 200 grams uh, heat is supplied at 12,000 joules per minute what is the specific latent heat specific latent heat l uh, and this is uh, even is multiplied by 4 as well so 200 grams so 12,000 multiplied by 4 divided by 200 so this this 260 so 240 joules per gram answer number b is the right to answer next question question 15 says a fixed amount of gas is trapped inside a metal can the temperature of the gas decreases but the volume does not change so remember how does this affect the kinetic energy of the gas molecules and the pressure inside the metal can so remember uh, the temperature of the gas decreases 
So as the temperature of the gas decreases, uh, uh, so basically what is happening P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. So temperature of the gas is decreasing. The volume does not change. Volume is kept constant. Volume is kept constant. Uh, what will happen to the pressure of the gas? So, um, so this is not exactly uh, P1, V1, P2, V2 case, but uh, uh, we can uh, see from P1, V equals to NRT, PV equals to NRT, yes. So we can say that, uh, that overall, if uh, volume is kept constant, so volume is not involved, temperature is decreased. So we can say that the, that the kinetic energy of the uh, uh, molecules has decreased. And if the kinetic energy of the molecules has decreased, what will happen? That there will be less uh, uh, number of molecules that will be striking against the walls of the container that ev eventually decreases the overall pressure. So what happens is that, that we have a decrease in kinetic energy decreases and kinetic energy decreases, that in a way decreases the pressure. So kinetic energy decreases, pressure decreases, answer A is the right choice. Next question, question number 16. Question number 16 says the diagram shows a room temperature liquid in a beaker. What reduces the rate of loss of beaker, uh, loss of liquid by evaporation? So blowing air across the top, it will increase uh, evaporation. Heating the liquid, it will increase evaporation. Putting lid on the beaker, yes, it will stop molecules from, uh, uh, from the molecules from escaping the beaker. So yes, it will stop uh, uh, or it will decrease the rate of evaporation. Transferring the liquid vehicle to larger diameter, larger diameter will result in more open space for the molecules or more uh, uh, area for the molecules to leave the surface. Uh, so that also increases the rate of evaporation. So answer C is the right choice. Next question, question 17. Question 17 says a wave of water, a water wave on a pond passes a region where the wave travels more slowly. It then returns to a region where it travels at the original speed. Assume that the frequency of the wave stays constant. Which side of the wave is correct? So remember, V equals to F lambda. And if we have frequency as constant, so V equals to uh, v, v by lambda must be constant. So if the wave is traveling slowly, so if uh, means the velocity is decreased, in order for frequency to remain constant, the lambda must decrease. So if it passes from a region, the wave travels slowly. So it means that uh, uh, first the wave is coming like this uh, and at a certain region uh, and a region comes so the wavelength of the wave should decrease uh, and this basically will increase the amplitude and then basically it passes again in the medium and it goes at its own. And so something like this will be the answer. So the best suited answer uh, this is at one boundary and then it goes back this is no this is the reverse case so this is not the answer so this is only one boundary condition there is no second boundary again this is only one boundary condition no second boundary. so answer a is the right answer next question question 18 what is meant by the amplitude of the wave so the amplitude of the wave the distance between the extreme points of a particle's motion the maximum distance of a maximum system a particle moves from its equilibrium position the maximum energy carried by the wave, no. The maximum power of, of the vibrations, no. So it, it can be either A or B. So distance between extreme points of a particle's motion, so no, this is not. So it is. Uh, so amplitude is basically uh, this distance. This is the amplitude of any wave. And this is the maximum distance from the equilibrium or the rest position, you can say. So the answer B is the right choice or the most suitable answer in this case. Next question, question, uh, question number 19. It says uh, the diagram shows one wavefront of the wave and it travels from deep water to shallow water in a ripple tank. 
what happens to the wavefront as it moves from shallow moves into the shallow water so remember uh, 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 this is how a ripple tank would look like so a ripple tank so now with this block we, this is our deep region this is our shallow region uh, and we have a dipper and the frequency is constant so now the frequency is constant so remember v equals to f lambda as we have seen in uh, question number 17 so frequency is constant so v by lambda must give you a constant value so um, in deep region say for example our wave is having a lambda here so this will be having something like this so lambda 2 and this is lambda 1 so lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 this means that velocity in v2 is less than v1 and frequency remains the same uh, if we are having this condition so what happens to the wavefront so the speed of the wavefront increases so it is moving into the shallow region so the speed must be decreasing so no speed must be decreasing the wave uh, the speed of the wavefront decreases yes the free decreases the wavelength of the remains constant no the wavelength also decreases the wavelength of the wave increases no it decreases so answer b is the right choice over here next question question number 20 it says the ray of light passes into a glass into a glass block it travels through the <laughs> excuse me so it travels through the glass block and then emerges into the air which is the angle of refraction at the surface x and y so remember uh, angle of incidence uh, at x surface is b uh, if, if this some ray is reflected so this is the angle of uh, reflection and some of the light is refracted so angle of refraction will always be with respect to the normal so the normal with respect to normal we have angle d so answer d will be the right choice right angle for this answer next question question 10 21 two rays of light pass through a lens in a region x which is the type of what type of lens is in this region x so remember uh, and which is the type of the images form so we can see that that once the light shine uh, uh, passes through region x the light rays are diverging so this is a diverging lens so it's not a converging lens so not a converging lens not a converging lens so if the light rays are diverging so image will be formed on the same side as of the object so it means that it's a virtual image so it's a virtual image um, so eventually uh, answer uh, the best answer is diverging and virtual so it would be d the best answer would be answer number d next part it says question number 22 a girl is long sighted which statement about uh, which, which statement is correct so first statement she sees close objects less clearly than a person with a normal vision yes this happens in a long sighted case she sees distant objects more clearly than a person with normal vision well and that is interesting a normal vision person can see objects pretty normally so this is statement itself is um, you know quite contradictory the fault is corrected with a diverging lens so long sightedness it is uh, done with a converging lens so no this is not the <coughs> right answer the image is of uh, of the close object is formed behind uh, in a long it, it, it's, it's behind uh, of a lantern again this is not the right answer the so answer a is the best answer for this case question number 323 uh, light rays are deviated by a prism so this is a prism a glass prism the deviation angle d is measured for light rays of different frequency including blue light and red light okay uh, which graph uh, of d deviation against frequency is correct so remember smaller wavelengths diverge more or they are more prone to bending or uh, a diffraction or, or you know uh, diffraction 
So this angle will be more for smaller wavelengths. So for smaller wavelengths, uh, uh, remember uh, if we have a, a visible light spectrum, V I Vib G Y O R. So uh, at infrared, we have uh, so lambda increasing in this fashion. So this is say 400 nanometer. This is 700 nanometer. So we can say from here is that blue light uh, is uh, of smaller wavelength. Uh, red light is of larger wavelength. So blue light will diffract more than the red light. So uh, the deviation angle for blue will be more than the red. So answer D will be the right choice. Next question. Question number 24. Which component of the electromagnetic spectrum is used for the remote control of the television? So remote control of the television generally uses infrared waves. So let's see, cameras, no. Infrared waves, yes. Radio waves, no. Ultraviolet waves, no. So answer B is the right answer. Next question. Question 25, a student stands at a distance X from a large wall. He claps his hand at regular uh, rate. So each clap coincides with the echo from the previous clap. In a time T, he claps N, he claps his hands N times, which expression is used to calculate the speed of sound in the air. So this problem is something like this. So for example, this is a wall. Uh, the student is standing here. Uh, he claps his hand, the sound goes and comes back. So the distance traveled by the sound, the total distance B is to the is the distance. Uh, uh, and uh, in time T, total claps are n claps. So, uh, so we can say that uh, there are n claps in t seconds. So one clap is in t by n seconds. So this is the one clap. So he claps his hand at regular rate so that each clap coincides with echo or the echo from the previous clap. So one clap at time this and then the other clap. So it means that in this time, the distance traveled by sound is D. So uh, we can say that uh, speed equals to distance per unit time. Uh, so distance is 2D, unit time is D by N. So speed is 2DN divided by D or say, say the distance is X. So we can call it 2xn divided by t. So 2nx divided by t, answer d is the right answer in this case. So next question, question 26, an ultrasound scanner produces an image of an unborn baby. What does the, the scanner use from the image of the baby? Ultrasound absorbed by the baby, no. Ultrasound emitted by the baby, no. Ultrasound reflected by the baby. So the, the ultrasound waves are reflected by the baby. So yes, ultrasound waves refracted by the baby. No, so no. So answer C is the right answer. Next question. Question 27. It says an X object on the electronic base. Y object is held, <coughs> held above object uh, X as shown. Uh, the reading on the balance increases when y is moved closer to x. So this y is moved closer to x. The reading x and y are both made of iron. So if x is iron, y is iron, I mean, they, there is no attraction or repulsion between them. So there will not be any increase or decrease in the reading. So both x and y are magnets. So if two magnets are brought close together to each other, it is a possibility that they attract and it is a possibility that they repel each other. So in case of both magnets repelling each other, there is a, a force that is exerted on X and that is exerted in uh, say this direction and that will increase the uh, uh, you know, mass or the readings on the balance. 
uh, because of the repulsion. But in case of attraction, yes, there is a possibility that this uh, readings will decrease. So this can be a good choice. Then uh, why is magnet and X is made up of iron? So if why is magnet X is made up of iron? So this X will uh, be attracted towards Y. And in that case, the reading will decrease. So this is not the right answer. So Y is made up of iron and X is a magnet. So Y is made up of iron and X is a magnet. Again, uh, there will be a, 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 a attraction uh, between them and the X will be pulled away from this plate and that will call decrease in reading. So answer B is the best answer in this case. Next question. Question 28. A teacher wants to demagnetize a bar and tries three different methods. Number one, he, he heats the bar and uh, heat the bar magnet to a temperature and let it cool to a high temperature and let it cool. Number two, place the bar magnet east, west, and hammer it. Number three, place the bar magnet inside a coil that has um, so interesting DC current in it and remove it from uh, remove and remove it from the coil slowly. Which uh, methods demagnetize the bar magnet? So heating demagnetizes, yes. Uh, placing the bar magnet eastwards, hammering, yes. Placing bar in a direct current, removing it from the coil slowly, no. I mean, this is not the way. So answer number one and two only are the best choices we have. So answer B is the uh, best choice we get. So next question, question 29. It says, a piece of paper torn out of an exercise book is shown. What is defined over here? Dash is the work done in joules on unit charge as it moves around the circuit. So this is basically the potential difference or the electromotive force is the work done in moving unit charge as it moves around the circuit. So answer D is the uh, right answer. Question 30, which circuit is connected to the, uh, uh, which circuit is connected to measure the current in a fixed resistor and the potential difference across the same resistor? So remember, uh, potential difference. Uh, so we are talking about the fixed resistor. So this is the fixed resistor. This is the variable resistor. So fixed resistor. So we are measuring uh, the potential difference across the fi uh, fixed resistor. So the voltage. Uh, so we can have. We need to have the uh, potential uh, voltmeter across pa uh, parallel across the fixed resistor. So. This is resistor R, this is I am our fixed resistor, this is my fixed resistor. This is so voltage voltmeter is in parallel, yes. So voltmeter is in series, so no, this is not the right way. Voltmeter are not connected in series. So these are two are not even a correct arrangement of circuits. Voltmeter is connected in parallel across both uh, the resistors. Okay. Uh, but uh, and measure the current in the fixed resistor. So this is these two resistors, uh, variable and the fixed resistor are connected in series. So the overall current remains same uh, in both variable and the fixed resistor. So we need to have ammeter in series. So ammeter in series is fine. Series is fine here. It is fine here. It is not fine here. So, so the uh, best case so in this case, uh, part C, we can the voltmeter will be measuring voltage across both of the series and fixed uh, across the variable and the fixed resistors. This is this voltmeter will not give us the right reading. So answer A is the right choice we have. Next question, question thirty one. It says the diagram shows circuit with five volt supply. Uh, the three resistors and four output terminals P, Q, R, S are shown. Between which pairs uh, of the terminals there is a potential difference of 1.5 volts, okay? So 1.5 volts, so first of all, just simply find out the value of current. So current is five volts divided by two plus five plus three. So the current is five by 10 and this is equal to 0 0.5 amperes. And now this is the current. So voltage across PQ uh, will be two into 0.5. This is one volt. Voltage QR, this will be five multiplied by 0.5. This will be 2.5 volts and voltage RS, three multiplied by 0.5, 
this is equal to 1.5 volts between which pair of terminals the potential difference is uh, 1.5 r and s so answer d is the right choice next question question 32 it says 200 watt lamps are connected in parallel to the main supply as shown how much electrical energy is supplied by the mains when the switch is closed for 36 minutes okay so remember electrical energy the units of energy are kilowatt hours um, so we are, have supplied energy for uh, so we have uh, 200 watts divided by kilo so we divided by 1000 200 uh, kilowatts uh, 36 minutes Mm, so 36 minutes uh, is become, um, so you have to convert it into hour, 36 divided by 60 hours. So this is what we get. So eventually uh, 200 divided by 1000 multiplied by 36 divided by 60. So it will be 0 0.12 kilowatt hours. So answer C is the uh, right choice for this. Next question. So the, in this say it says the cost of electricity is nine cents per kilowatt hour. So cost is uh, nine cents per one kilowatt hour. It takes uh, 0 0.06 hours to 0 0.06 hours. Uh, and cost 1.2 cents to boil a water in a kettle. What is the power rating of the kettle? So that is uh, again an uh, uh, interesting question over here. So let's see how we are going to solve it. Hmm. Hmm. So we have, uh, first of all, we have to calculate the number of units. So, so cost is generally, uh, so nine cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, so nine cents for one kilowatt hours. And if we have 1.2 cents, it means that we have used how many kilowatt hours. So that is my first case. We have to find out kilowatt hours. So for 1.2 cents, so uh, nine cents is one. One cent is one by nine kilowatt hours. 1.2 cents is one. 0.2 divided by 9 kilowatt hours. So this is the kilowatt hours we have. So we have a total amount of energy used kilowatt hours is 1.2 divided by 9. Uh, and the number of hours, if we divide it by hours, we will get uh, kilowatts. And that is the rating which we need. And number of hours are 0 0.06. So this comes out to be 1.2 divided by 9 divided by 0 0.06. So this is 2.2222 uh, kilowatts. So A, B, C. So answer C is the nearest one. So the cattle is rated at 2.2 kilowatt hours. No, sorry, 2.2 kilowatt. Next question. Question 34, it says a transformer with an efficiency of 100% has a primary voltage of 600 volts and a secondary voltage uh, and, and a secondary voltage output of 240 volts. The secondary coil is attached to a resistance of 120 uh, ohms. What is the power dissipated in the resistor and the current in the primary coil? So first of all, power dissipated in the resistor. So power equals equal to I square R 
equals to we have v uh, so v square by r as well so v is 240 square divided by 120 so the power dissipated is 240 do, uh, square divided by 120 the power dissipated is 480 watts right and uh, the current in secondary i secondary uh, the current is 240 divided by 120 this is 2 amperes so 2 amperes so remember uh, uh, the ratio v primary divided by v secondary equals to n primary divided by n secondary equals to i secondary over i primary so this is the transformer equation for an ideal transformer so we have uh, 600 uh, volt input to 400 volt wind input. I secondary, I secondary is two ampere. I primary, we have to find out. So I primary comes out to be uh, two multiplied by 480 divided by 600, 1.6 amperes. Oh, mm, 1.6 or 1.0, or sorry, uh, 1.8. Uh, yes, so it will be 0.8. So Sorry, 240. Yes, this will be 0 0.8 amperes I primary. So the best answer is power is 480. Power is 480. Current is 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Answer C is the right answer. Next question. Question 35. It says the diagram shows an alarm system in which switch S is uh, shown close. The top circuit is arranged so that the electromagnet is positioned over the soft iron contact. What happens when the switch S is open? So remember, if we open this switch, uh, so there is some, so there is uh, a change, an instantaneous change in uh, current over here, and that produces a magnetic field, uh, and that uh, produces a magnetic field. Um, so this is a positive, and this is a negative. Um, so current uh, may be flowing in this fashion earlier and in this fashion we have north pole here south pole here when the system is closed uh, and this uh, uh, um, since, since this is a dc so uh, this you will not be having so but once the um, uh, instantaneous this current initially stops this induces south pole here north pole here and this south uh, pole um, uh, and this basically uh, uh, doesn't, uh, uh, you can say, uh, according to the Lenz law, opposes the cause producing it. So it also induces south pole air, then that basically repels this both. There is a force of repulsion. And this basically, with that force of repulsion, moves down and gets in contact with the metal instantaneously. Uh, and it, the bell starts ringing as we open up. So iron contact it moves down and the bell starts ringing. So iron contacts drops and the bell rings. So answer A is the right answer. Next question. Question 36, it says a microphone detects a musical chord and a signal is fed into an oscilloscope. The diagram shows the trace which appears on the screen. The spot on the oscilloscope screen takes 1.2 millisecond to travel across the screen. So in time 1.2 millisecond, it takes uh, to scratch. What is the frequency of the musical sound? So time for 1.2 milliseconds, this is uh, two cycles. So for one cycle, it is 0 0.6 millisecond. So frequency is one by T. So one divided by 0 0.6 milli and one divided by 0 0.6 milli is around uh, 1700 Hertz. And so this is the uh, right answer. Or uh, this is actually 166.6667 Hertz. So actually so answer number C is the right answer. So. Next question, question 37. It says uh, a student connects two components whose resistance can change and, and a fixed resistor across the power supply. So we, a student has a LDR, 
Uh, so this is a light dependent resistance. So resistance uh, LDR is inversely proportional to intensity of light. Density of light. Then there is a fixed resistance R and there is a, a this is a thermistor or a temperature dependent resistance. So R them, thermistor is inversely proportional to temperature as well. So under what condition the voltage across the fixed resistor? So this voltage, this voltage will be the greatest. So basically what we, are, uh, what we want is that the maximum voltage should drop across this. So it means that maximum voltage will drop across this resistor when this uh, R LDR will be the least and R thermistor will be the least, right? So uh, LDR resistance will be least when the intensity will be the greatest or we have a bright condition. So we need to have a bright condition here. Uh, and this is a thermistor. Thermistor, the resistance will be uh, low when the temperature will be high. So we need to have a warm slash hot condition over here. So technically, uh, so warm and hot condition along with a bright condition will give you the maximum voltage across the uh, uh, fixed resistor. Um, so remember uh, the current I equals to V divided by R fixed plus R LDR plus R thermistor. So, and voltage across R will be I times R. So the, uh, the maximum voltage will come when this value will decrease because R fix will uh, be a fixed value and the numerator must be the least value. So R fixed will be fixed, uh, I will be fixed. So the numerator will have the lowest value when this, this will be fixed. So eventually answer is a warm, hot condition and bright warm and hot condition or along with bright light will give you the uh, most uh, voltage or the highest drop across the fixed resistor. So next question, question 138. <coughs> Technetium 99M is a radioactive isotope used in medical scanning. It is injected into the body and its emission are detected outside the body. Which characteristics of technetium, uh, technetium, technetium 99M make it suitable for medical scanning? It has a long half-life and emits alpha radiation. So alpha radiations are generally uh, stopped with a, uh, you know, very uh, thin, uh, film and so alpha radiations can't um, emit outside the body. So uh, that is uh, one challenge. And secondly, we do not uh, need a high uh, long lifetime source. So no, uh, for medical imaging. Again, long lifetime gamma radiation. So gamma radiation, yes, we can measure it outside the body as well, but long half life is not recommended. A short half life and alpha. Again, short life, we, half life, we need this. Alpha radiation can't uh, pass through human body. It will be absorbed, so no. Short half life and emits gamma radiation, yes. This is the, both of the things which we required and are most suitable for, considered as the properties for this uh, isotope. So next question. Question 39, which statement about production of electricity in nuclear power station is correct? In the reactor, main reaction occurs when a proton hits a uranium nuclei. Well, actually, it's a neutron hitting a uh, neutron hitting a nuclei. So no, this is not the process taking place in a reactor is called nuclear fusion. No, so then it is called nuclear fission. The reactor produces energy to boil water and produce steam. So yes, this is fine. Carbon dioxide is a major waste part from no. Carbon dioxide is it's from the coal based generation. It's not from the nuclear based generation. So, just only steam is the byproduct for them. So, answer C is the best choice we have. Next, and the last question it says in a simple model atom X of an atom, X orbits around Y. So, in an atom, the electron orbits around nucleus. Nucleus. So X is an electron, Y is nucleus, yes. X is neutron, so no, Y is no. 
no, 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 and no. Again, part D. So A is the best answer. So, so here, I mean, uh, this is uh, uh, the last question for this exam. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed listening to it. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask in the chat window. Uh, I wish you best of luck for your exams and future endeavors. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.